Hey, what's going on guys? Yesterday, the official Soadesco YouTube channel, as well as the official Monster Crown YouTube channel, released a video announcing Monster Crown's early access launch. This announcement for many came seemingly out of nowhere, as we previously did not really have a specific launch period for the game, it just kind of said, whenever it launches on Steam. We now know it's coming July 31st, and might I say, damn, that was a nice trailer. I've had nothing but great interactions with Studio Aram, and I can say wholeheartedly that I'm looking forward to supporting them in their endeavor. My biggest regret is not knowing about the Kickstarter back when it launched. It's actually kind of nuts, because this summer is sort of like the summer of monster taming. We know Koromon's supposed to release at some point soon. We have Temtem's Kisiwa update in July. We have the Kindred Fates Combat Alpha slated for August. Serulum Ultimate's Alpha apparently is only going to be a couple months, so that's also going to come out in the summer. And not to mention that Monster Sanctuary just came out with their Underworld update. And even Pokemon has the expansion pass coming out this month, so forget summer, this is the year of monster taming. Anyway, so tangent aside, I figured I'd want to celebrate Monster Crown's announcement by making a little video showcasing the various starters that will be joining you on your quest through Crown Island. I've pretty well completed the Monster Crown beta minus a few optional stuff, so expect more Monster Crown videos in the near future. Now, Monster Crown gives you a choice of five starters. After your dad forces you to partake in some child labor, he gives you a comic where one page has a survey and if you fill it out it gives you sort of like a chance to win a monster. Now, as a 14 year old child, owning a monster at your age is quote unquote unprecedented. So it's kind of funny that they're just giving them away in a comic book. Like what if some like eight year old one? You'll get a series of questions each related to one of the monster's types. And when the monster does eventually show up, you do get the option of picking yourself. So you don't have to be worried about accidentally picking the wrong one and not making the choice you wanted to. The Koromon has something similar to that. I had initially thought it was picked for me. So when I got the recommendation, I was both excited that it wasn't like an ugly one, but I was also disappointed at the same time. But luckily for me, I got to pick Dragon Boy. Anyway, so speaking of which, there are five types in Monster Crown. I'm gonna do a separate video analyzing each type, but basically the types are vicious, brute, relentless, will, and unstable. Very different from what you're probably used to. Now our first monster is going to be our vicious type starter, that being Hoo Hoo are said to be the physical embodiment of malicious intent. No longer a mere specter, it can now affect the world around it. They're said to be chiefly focused on their own selfish goals and during the quietest hours of the night, they pursue these ambitions with little regard for the safety of their tamer. They're said to prefer areas of a grim nature such as graveyards or forests with a reputation of misfortune. Now below you can see some variants, one for each type. Now initially I was kind of confused as to what exactly these uh, were, but essentially they're crossbreed forms where Hoo is a primary parent and then it, you know, breeds with whatever. Now I'm going to do a separate video in the future going over breeding after I've tinkered with it a lot more as I think having at least a general overview of the system would be extremely helpful as a, a resource because resources are kind of sparse right now for Monster Crown. My favorite one of the bunch is probably this vicious type one. I mean, look at it. Look at those sights. Next up's Knight. No, not you. Go home. This brute type monster tends to live in packs where the leader is not determined through regular combat, but instead through one decisive strike. Generally, this will leave the victor exhausted and the other one nothing but a torn husk of what it once was. If neither canine manages to kill the other, the pack will step in and devour them both. This will establish a new pecking order. Now, if you look at the variants here, each really do embody the types they're based after, each being really solid designs in my opinion. Now, Darwal is our will type starter and is considered to be a rare creature that resides just past the shoreline. It sits waiting to reclaim the land that it once held. Apparently, its claws are the result of its waiting. Through sheer willpower, its fins turned into claws, likely foreshadowing how it plans to reclaim its home. It takes great satisfaction in pruning unsuspected whale wrists. Its crossbreed variants provide a very large spectrum of body types ranging from seemingly little to massive. It also has an atomic clock form which I'll talk about these more in depth in the future but think of it like aging mixed with mega evolution that could potentially also be permanent evolution. There's a lot that goes into it but like I said we'll talk about it more in depth in the future. So with this form, Darwal having achieved its goal now roams the lands it once sought freely and happily. Although due to the effects of the atomic clock, Darwal's actually pretty clumsy now and no longer used to its body. Said to be rather unintelligent, the unstable type monster Ambigu is said to accidentally leave parts of itself left over after transforming. This is due to the fact that groups of Ambigu can actually swap parts with one another. They can transform into a variety of different textures and shapes. They're even known to eat their own body parts when they're hungry. As you can see with its cross breed variants, and even more so than Darwal, has an extremely diverse set of characteristics, changing from one animal to another based on its breed. It goes very well with its theme. It sort of reminds me of like the ditto of Monster Crown. Now last but certainly not least is Dracoil, the relentless type starter. 
Dracoil is said to stand waiting. For what is actually unknown, but legend has it that after over a century of waiting, Dracoil will undergo a violent transformation. Many have claimed to have unlocked this transformation, as well as this asshole who told me they had an elder Dracoil and got me hyped and it turns out it's just a Gredang. As you can see, its various crossbreed forms all seem to pull from that draconic theme. It's honestly my favorite starter personally. Now, after undergoing an atomic clock transformation, we get its true form here. In this form, Dracoil sacrifices speed for attack and magic resistance. When an aged Dracoil ascends upon the shores, those lucky enough to see this rare stone beast will have destruction laid upon them. This transformation would usually happen after a Dracoil reaches 1,000 years old. So yeah guys, those were the five starters you'll be able to choose from at the beginning of Monster Crown. Three of them currently don't have Atomic Clock or AC forms for short just yet, but perhaps the early access will bring them upon us. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I've already covered some of these monsters over the course of two older videos I made, but I think one of them hasn't quite aged very well and it's mostly just me reading off descriptions instead of summarizing them and really getting invested in their personalities in an interesting way. But I think the second video turned out pretty well for the time it was released and I'm quite proud of it. So feel free to check it out if you'd like. Well, with all that being said, make sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd, check out our subscriber discord, links in the description, and until next time, peace.